the thing that really keeps me working in healthcare is just the sheer joy and pleasure and satisfaction of the work that I do. I really couldn't imagine any career that would be um, more satisfying and more interesting and more compelling. Uh, but it's not always been that way. Um, there were times um, in the difficulties of clinical practice when I felt you know, tired or grumpy or overwhelmed. And there was a change I made in myself, a decision I made one day that I found has made a big difference to how I feel about healthcare and my experience of it. Um, most of the clinical work I do in anaesthetic practice is working in maternity. And I do a 24-hour shift every Tuesday right through the day and night. And I'm on call to um, answer to a woman that needs pain relief for labor or to do anesthesia for an emergency caesarean section or to consult on the ward. And sometimes in the night I might get called out three or four times and I've already worked 13 hours in the day. I'm pretty fatigued and tired. Mm -hmm. One day I made a decision that this was a complete waste of time to put in my head thoughts of feeling tired and grumpy and, and sorry for myself. And I thought what I should reflect on instead is the extraordinary privilege of being invited, me being invited, to take part in one of life's most intimate events, to be invited into a room where there's a mother um, in a lot of pain, uh, probably half naked or even maybe sometimes completely naked, very vulnerable, um, the most intimate of events. And for me to be invited to be part of that and part of a joyful event as well, ultimately, I thought, well, that's an extraordinary privilege. So that would be a better set of thoughts to put in my head <laughs> when I get called out for the third time in the night. So the interesting thing was that um, what happened over time is that the quality of my experience around that changed a lot. And now when I'm called out in the night and I knock on the door, I'm, I'm welcomed very warmly. And, and what I think of myself now is, first of all, as a, as a kind and caring human being, and secondly, as an expert. And it is a matter, I think, of um, really trying to be rather more humble and respectful and really listen to the patient in front of you and form a relationship and let them set the agenda um, and then provide, use your expert skills to help them provide and care for them on their own terms, according to their own agenda, what's most important to them. You've asked a question which is about the relationship between burnout and, and issues such as compassion and caring. Um, in the medical profession, there's a widely held belief that if you get too close to your patients, if you demonstrate too much empathy, if you kind of get emotionally engaged with your patients, that that would not be sustainable, that you would just get burnt out. Um, but there is research coming out now, which is not surprising from the perspective of, of other cultures, that actually the doctors who show the greatest empathy are the ones who are least likely to burn out. Um, and I think in the Western world, we have a, a very curious notion about compassion, that that is something that's a one-way street. And there's a widely prevalent theory that if you spend all of your time being compassionate to patients um, and caring for them and getting engaged, that your tank would somehow run dry, that you would have no energy left, that that would lead to burnout. And therefore, you have to defend yourself. You have to put up some barriers. You need to remain a bit detached. Um, and we also see tragedies and traumas and to be deeply emotionally involved in those. It's believed, you know, would be a source of great personal distress and, and leading to burnout. Um, my experience more recently has been exactly the opposite and that's in accordance with, for instance, in the Buddhist world, they would perceive that compassion is equally, each act of compassion is an act of compassion equally for yourself as the other person. When you practice compassion, you're actually strengthening your own heart and the parts of your brain associated with positive emotions. And that's been my experience, that the more empathy and compassion and caring I bring to my patients, the more love I have in my heart, the more energy I have, the more that I have to give. Um, and there is a way of being fully present with someone, even in the face of terrible tragedy. And I do shed a tear and I feel emotions. Um, and I have a close connection. But at the end of that, I can walk away with a sense of deep satisfaction in my heart, knowing that, that my being fully present as a human being, supporting and helping that person through the tragedy, really made a huge difference. Um, and I go away with more love in my heart and not less. So I think there are some beliefs in the Western world that are quite harmful, that, that actually are wrong, um, and that we need to change the understanding of the nature of compassion.